like if there was a league for this, I'd be an all star. I'm really good at recognizing bah. all the places bah. where they are not meeting there it is. my expectations yeah. of how they should live. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So welcome back to The Move, where we are vibing with the text 10 minutes at a time. Today's going to be a special episode. We're in Romans chapter 3, and we decided to pause a little bit on uh, 19 and 20. We weren't planning on doing an entire episode, but uh, we figured this would be something worth slowing down. Gotta let it breathe. Taking a look at. Gotta let it breathe. So with that said... The question is, have you read it? It's two verses that we're going to concentrate. Super, I, why don't you just read Let's it? Let's just do it together. Why don't you do that right there? Romans 3, 19 and 20. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes a knowledge of sin. Ready or not, here we go. Ten Before minutes. we do 10, y'all subscribe if you haven't. Oh, Make sure it. you communicate with do us. Do it. We're going to be uh, here yeah, 10 we'll minutes at here. a time, man. Yeah, we'll do it. Cool. Let's go. So here's what I want to frame because you know how, fa- how, how you like to frame. I like things. to frame. You missed your calling as a framer. Right. Now we know, verse 19, that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. So this idea that the law only speaks to those under it. And often in Christian circles, we have then, I've heard it said that then, well, prior to the law, nobody is actually subject to the law because it hasn't spoken. And the assumption is that the law that we're referring to in that sentence is the Ten Commandments. Which would make sense because the Ten Commandments had to be given to a specific group of people at a specific place in a specific time. So yeah, clearly the Ten Commandments didn't apply beforehand. But what we also want to be careful to point out is that doesn't mean that anarchy ruled for the millennia before and even before sin and with the other other worlds and beings that are out there. There must still be something deeper or more profound than the Ten Commandments. But Justin... I must protest. Okay, protest. If you say that anarchy didn't rule, then how is it possible that anarchy did not rule if the law was not yet present? Because without law, what you're left with is anarchy. So Mm -hmm. how does that work? So what I'm saying is that while the Ten Commandments came to being at a specific place, that there was something under that. Mm -hmm. There's the law, Mm -hmm. Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm but there's also the law. Mm. There is the law, and then there's the The law. law. (laughs) I feel like I got to work out a little bit more before I can do that. Do some (laughs) push-ups. So so here's here's, uh, what I'm hearing you say, is if I, the the Ten Commandments and the other corresponding ceremonial and legal laws of the nation of Israel that are either 611 or 613, depending on Mm -hmm. who you follow, um, that those are an expression. By the way, what are the two that are under dispute? I've never known that. Well, we're going to do special podcasts for those. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Mostly because I don't know them and I got to go. <laughs> we'll look. go do 614 episodes yeah, of the law. Right? So that, that, that this law in the Ten Commandments, that there is something else that is a higher law almost as it were. Right. That then is I'm expressed. I'm saying deeper law as if the law under the law is like foundation. Mm-hmm. It's the thing upon which the Ten Commandments is Are built, built on. Right. And I'm saying higher in the sense that it's the same thing. A uh, loftier. That loftier, that something above that then there is a expression of this through the Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments might be a portal into something that's even of greater import. Right. Right. Okay. Now. With that being said, I see something at play here. Okay. And it's as we keep reading in verse 20. Well, even verse uh, 19, after the comma, I'm reading in the ESV version, after the comma, it says, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be accountable to God. Mm -hmm. So the assumption is- The fact that it says the whole world is really revealing because we're talking about those who are under the law. Yes. We could read- Israel, yes, the Jews, yes, and yet the whole world is supposed to be accountable. Yes. Does this mean that the Ten Commandments then need to go to everybody, or is, is it speaking to this idea that there's a, a, a more broad and deeper law? Well, this is where I think we have to call back to 
uh, Romans chapter one, Uh particularly this idea that Paul's saying, hey, listen, to the nations has been revealed the character of God, who he is through his works, what he has done in history, because nobody has been left without this revelation. Uh, Romans 1 verse 20-ish, if you're wanting to refer back. Right. And then because people did not give thanks or they did not honor him, their minds became darkened. And yet... Paul seems to allude, not only allude, I think he directly talks about this, that there is some sort of work of the law inside present. of yeah. people mm-hmm. absent written Ten Commandments in stone. Let me draw your attention back to Romans chapter 2, particularly verse 14. For when Gentiles who do not have the law, but by nature do what the law requires, they, law, they are a law unto themselves even though they do not have the law. Now watch this next phrase. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts. So what is the work of the law? Because the works of the law back in verse 20. Circumcision, eating a certain way, wearing certain clothes, not getting your hair done right. Women having a ritual cleansing right. after birth or a period, right? Like mm-hmm. all of these things are the works of the law. These are the things that the law requires you to do. Yes. In order to show you what the work of the law. And what is that? Well, what's the point of the law? The law seems to desire to highlight the fact that you constantly need cleansing so that you in and of yourself don't actually have it. Mm -hmm. So the righteousness you think that comes from the law, because the law tells you, hey, clean yourself at this time, don't do this, make sure you cut your hair this way, don't eat that. You think that that's righteousness, that's not righteousness. Mm -mm. That's just highlighting to you that you in fact aren't righteous or you don't have the cleanness that you need. Yeah. So for somebody who doesn't have the 10 commandments, How is it that they might come to an awareness that they are not meeting some sort of standard that exists? How does that awareness come for somebody who doesn't have the written code? Well, that happens because God is at work in all people at all times. God is, is, his spirit is speaking to our hearts, even when we couldn't articulate it in chapter and verse. That's right. And I would draw attention to in verse 15, right? You go to 15. That's chapter two, chapter two, verse 15. There's a particular word here that I'm trying to go on. And it's one that you don't need God to recognize, to Mm -hmm. be honest with you. We don't need God to recognize. Conscience. Yeah. That's what I was referring to when I said spirit on your heart. Yeah. yeah. Conscience. We have a conscience that we know. Don't do this. Don't do that. This is right living. And there's a lot of arguments about like conscience being a evo- social thing, social right, thing, or yeah. evolutionary construction of it, and yet it's there. It's there. You can try and describe it or explain it, but, but the fact is that everyone has that. You could say it's shame. You could say it's pressure. It's you could say it's because you grew up with Asian parents and they're just like really mean and demanding. Your parents oh. are not all. Asian your your parents, parents aren't Asian no, demanding. No, my parents aren't Asian. They're, oh, interesting. Yeah, they're, they're. <laughs> So, but yeah, this, this idea of conscience that we have the work of the law inside of us, absent me growing out my hair in a particular way and not eating pork, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm constantly aware that I have these expectations for myself and not only for myself, but I have expectations for others of how they ought to live. And I'm really, really like... If there was a league for this, I'd be an all-star. I'm really good at recognizing bah. all the places bah. where they are not meeting there it is. my expectations yeah. of how they should live, yeah. right? Yeah. And then there are those moments of clarity and lucidity where I turn that mirror back on myself and I say, Oh, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, oh. No, oh, man. Oh. There's a famous uh, Key and Peele skit. I won't totally describe it here. Mm-hmm. But if you remember, there's a key and, key, and, uh, a key and peel skit where there's an awareness, a keen awareness of a hypocrisy of a person where he realizes, like, oh, I'm, I'm a jerk. If you know it, <laughs> check it out. But I realize that so often. Mm-hmm. And what is that? That is the work of the law within me. And this, this makes sense. When, when you think about this later on, Paul talks about more about the purpose of the law as, as one who looks in a glass, one who looks in the mirror, sees himself as dirty. But then what does he do? Yeah. 
Did, does he like get the mirror and uh, try and scrub that dirt off his face? No, because that's not what the mirror is for. That's not what the law is for. The law has an uh, has a purpose. It says there that the law comes knowledge of sin. Of sin. Of sin. And yes, while it could be accurate to say that one of the ways that the law is manifested is in the Ten Commandments, because yeah. clearly thou shalt not kill yeah. and murder and blah 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 blah. Right. Yeah. That can't be the only way. Yeah. And let's let's just quickly at least address this. When we say sin, mm-hmm. we do not mean that you are without value, without worth, and that we don't look for the best things of life and try to live moral, beautiful lives. That's not mm-hmm. what we're saying. Mm-hmm. I think too often biblically means that when you sin, you're just a wretch. No, 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 no. The biblical understanding of sin is all the little things that we do that demean the humanity that we actually have. Mm-hmm. and. That doesn't come by way of doing something wrong as much as not doing the thing that's maximally right. Mm. And so that sin is just a reality that you and I at times don't live in maximal righteousness. And what Paul is saying is that, that, listen, God himself will reveal maximal righteousness and then give us a gift so that we can live in full confidence as new humans. We'll get to that gift in our next 10 minutes, huh? Man, it's moving. It's moving. There you go, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Of course, again, let us know your thoughts in the comments below this video. Is this landed? If not, how can we do it better? Let us know. We're open to those kinds of comments. Awesome. We'll see you in the next 10. See ya.